mysticism and snakes cannot be separated, Wh whatever part of the world, whatever the culture, whatever religious backgrounds, where there's an exploration or experience of mysticism, there, there will be snakes in abundance either symbolically or in reality. Whether it's the ancient cultures of Mesopotamia, Crete, Egypt, Cambodia, Vietnam, and of course we don't have to mention India because there is no Indian temple without a snake. So one aspect of it is symbolism because the yoga uses the snake a coiled up snake as uh, Kundalini. But uh, the reason why it has earned that symbolic status is uh, the beings who are of celestial nature, beings who are in consciousness and capability superior to what is human nature, have always chosen to take the form of snake whenever they are here in this dimension of existence. This is an experience you can trace back into every mythology on the planet. In India, there are innumerable stories, starting from Shiva being a Nagabhushana to all the goddesses anywhere in the world, the Middle Eastern ones, the North African ones, the Mesopotamian ones, and the Asian ones, Southeast Asian ones, Central European ones, you will see goddesses and snakes are always symbolized together. Because snake is a… even these creatures who are here on this planet, they have a certain sense of perception which even humans lack. Those of you, I do not know if there's anybody here who witnessed the, the Dhyanalinga consecration. When we were consecrating the Vishuddhi Chakra, there were over four hundred and odd people, there were no arrangements like this, people just crowded around, huddled. Fully packed with people all around, but this one snake somehow would creep through the crowd and come to us. Any number of times we pick it up and leave it out in the forest, but within half an hour he's again back there, he wants to be there. <laughs> he doesn't want to miss the consecration. <laughs> because if one becomes very meditative, the first creature which is drawn towards meditativeness is snake. This is the reason why you always see sages and seers, if there are images, snakes are around, and hills have grown around them. This is just to indicate that, uh, to honor this creature because it has such a sense of perception that it is able to perceive certain dimensions which human beings are longing to know. Human beings are desperate to know, but uh, this creature which has no ears, you know, a snake is stone deaf. So he uses his whole body as the ear. He puts his ear to the ground, truly. <laughs> because his whole body is in touch with the ground and he's really got a ear to the ground and any fundamental change, even in a slightest manner that happens in this planet, a snake will know. If there is going to be, not yet, if there is going to be an earthquake in California, 
You ask a snake in the Velangiri mountains, he will tell you at least thirty to forty days ahead of time that there is going to be an earthquake in California. I'm not joking about this because their sense of perception is such. Any smallest moment in the planet, snake is the first creature which knows because its sense of perception with regarding to the planet is so very keen and so very sharp. So, because of this perception, always the mythology, in India there's plenty, all over the world there is. You have always heard of Nagalokas existing beneath the underground, the nether world is the Nagaloka where there's a whole host of… <coughs> there's a whole society down there, not just of snakes, human beings who belong to the snake clan who are known as the Nagas, who played a very, very important role in shaping the consciousness of this nation and literally every other culture actually. Today we know, historically we know that the great temples of Angkor, Angkor Thom and Angkor Wat of Cambodia were built by the Naga descendants. These Nagas went from India and they interbred with the indigenous people there and established a kingdom. And later on when certain Kaundalya who was a Brahmin king from India went and uh, conquered or defeated the Naga queen because Nagas were always matriarchal families, they were ruled by queens and not by kings. And human beings who are very deeply associated with snakes exist even today. I am one of them, <laughs> not a Naga but <laughs> My life and snakes cannot be separated. Every significant event in my life is always punctuated by the presence of a snake. Uh, after the Dhyanalinga consecration, when my body was in shambles, my system was broken and you know, I was uh, going through various upheavals in the system where uh, the medical doctors uh, said there is no hope, you have all kinds of bizarre things going in your body, your systems will fail. In United States they said you are a blue light emergency, you should never get onto an airplane, you are a danger. So uh, I think those of you who read the mystics musings must be aware of it, some mention of that is there. These mystical snake forms have… are not imagined my life and snakes cannot be separated. Every significant event in my life is always punctuated by the presence of a snake. Uh, after the Dhyanalinga consecration, when my body was in shambles, my system was broken and you know, I was uh, going through various upheavals in the system where uh, the medical doctors uh, said there is no hope, you have all kinds of bizarre things going in your body, your systems will fail. In the United States they said you are a blue light emergency, you should never get onto an airplane, you are a danger. So uh, I think those of you who read the mystics musings must be aware of it, some mention of that is there. These mystical snake forms have… are not imagined they are a reality in another dimension. Those beings who wish to enter this dimension of existence have always chosen snake as a form because of various advantages that snake has. Probably he knows more about me than I know about him. I know a lot about him, but he knows more about me than I know about him. That's how he is. Mysticism and snakes cannot be separated because it's a certain dimension of perception and this creature has come endowed with that capability. That is why the highest form of perception which is the opening of the third eye in the Shiva's forehead is punctuated by the presence of the snake in the sense 
The raised hood cobra, you know, you must understand this, this is a reptile, it must be crawling on the ground. Having Shiva having it at his feet is okay, but he has got it over his head to indicate that it is even about him. The indication is, in some ways he is even better than me, that's what he is also saying. So it is the rising of his energies to the peak which has opened up his third eye. Perception and refinement of energy are very, very directly connected. If there is no refinement of energy, there is no perception. There is no way to perceive when energy is so gross. So all practices, all yoga, all sadhana, every kind of uh, spiritual practice and process on the planet is essentially to refine your energies. The temple is just a huge refinement of energies. It's not something different. It is just very intense and refined form of energy is what you're referring to as a goddess. Every woman has the same thing, every man also has the same thing, but it is not in such level of intensity and refinement. So right now Bhairavi is in an extremely intense state and a refined state. That's what makes her the goddess above everyone. <clears throat> That's what, though we create her, we bow down to her because she's refined and manages to stay that way because we have to go through various aspects of life. Some, some moments we are like that, some moments we are some other way. But she's like that all the time because she has the advantage of, uh, you know, not going, not having dinner breaks and bathroom breaks and all these hassles. And that's the advantage of being a god or a goddess <laughs> So, in this temple, we will grow snakes. When I say we'll grow snakes, uh, now that she has tasted this, she may want to come back every day, I don't know. See, right now if I leave her, she'll not go this way, she'll go this way. I won't do that now because uh, others also may go this way <laughs> Other ladies may run this way, so just to avoid that <laughs> This process, when I say we grow snakes, uh, you see snake symbolism in many places, but uh, this particular… these two snakes entwined. One aspect of this is, we've been doing the churning process, the hands go <coughs> going, this churning is essentially every subatomic particle is in this moment of counter uh, moment, clockwise and anticlockwise. The most basic building material of matter in the existence is always going this way. I did not know this till about uh, four months ago when I was invited by a physicist a uh, professor in the Oxford University who teaches physics, fundamental physics there and uh, they wanted to see how they can link mysticism and physics, so we sat down for a discussion and uh, this went on and on for about eight hours non-stop and the, even the physicist forgot to go to the bathroom. <laughs> see, when somebody forgets to go to the bathroom, that means unknowingly they're stepping into a different dimension, unknowingly. Knowingly if they do it, it would be great but unknowingly, they're moving into a space where physical is not ruling them anymore. When they forget to eat, when they forget to go to the bathroom, when they forget to sleep, that means the control of the physical over their lives is coming down, even without making a conscious effort towards it. And uh, when, he, when he asked me, okay, what is the fundamental nature of uh, your perception of your body? I said, the fundamental nature of my body is just this, I did this. I said, what is that? I said, that's the fundamental nature of my body. Don't ask me what's the fundamental nature of me, I can't gesticulate about that. But if you ask me about the fundamental nature of my body, the fundamental nature of my body is this. He said, do you know that is the basic particle in the existence? I said, I don't know but that's the basic particle in me because I have not traveled the existence but I've explored me. Then I said, okay, if that is so, Another dimension of me is, I made him hold his hand about uh, eight inches above my head and I closed my eyes and sat and I said, just feel it for some time and see how this is. 
If you feel this, you will see the moment will not be like this, it will be like this. He said, what is that? I said, uh, that is the last step. That's the last step of physicality. If you go over that, the physical will be finished. He said, do you know this is a sign of infinity? I said, I didn't even know that because I, you know, I generally did not go to the math classes when I was <laughs> growing up. I could count my fingers, I thought that was good enough. <coughs> so, uh, this is happening in the body all the time. This is happening in your system, this is happening in every subatomic particle, this is happening in the whole cosmos, this moment of counterclockwise moment. It is this which is holding the existence together. The fundamental building particle of the physicality is held together only because it is moving both clockwise and anticlockwise. If it was moving one way, it would spin out of control. Because it is moving mo both ways, the energy that is cre created around it is holding everything together. Today, uh, I mean there's a huge… Uh, in the scientific circles there is so many aspects that are being spoken. One thing that they are not able to figure is the nature of gravity, time and space. They are not figured but at least they are on the right track to a large extent. I know this sounds arrogant as if I have to approve the scientific research. Uh, but I feel they'll agree with me in about hundred years time. So, this gravity, which is actually the basis of existence, is generated in these two moments, this clockwise and anti-clockwise moment. And this essential moment of the existence and the snake are very, very directly connected. So it's perception, probably if you want to know all the secrets of gravity, you have to just talk to him. If you learn to listen to what he's got to say, he knows why it's all together. That's why Shiva said, okay, you stay above me, you are smart, okay? You're too smart. Though you're a crawling creature, you're too smart, so you stay above me. Every culture has recognized this one way or the other. Even the Christian, Christian theology says uh, it is snake which initiated life on this planet, Somebody who initiates life on this planet has to be the agent of the divine, isn't it? Because somebody could not even accept the simple biological processes of life, they called him the agent of the devil. But without him, according to their story, you wouldn't be here today. Hmm? You wouldn't be here today, isn't it? So any number of things are there, I can tell you a thousand different stories about snakes and their… the role that they have played in our culture. The great ones who are known almost to everybody and probably the many people here who are named after them like Vasuki and uh, maybe Taxila and you know, there are any number of them. Maybe these days nobody is naming anybody as Karkotaka but <laughs> But there used to be Karkotakas, many people by those names. So today we are uh, trying to initiate the snake into the temple by doing a Sarpa Seva and uh, this Sarpa Seva will be available to people once a month on every full moon day. The Sarpa Seva will be available to people to come and do it. Uh, so th these two snakes, which are in a certain… Uh, it's not an entanglement, you can see the arrangement, it's a conscious embrace of the two. There is a difference between embrace and entanglement. An embrace is happening out of involvement, Entangling, uh, entanglement happens out of compulsive needs. So they're in a certain embrace and a certain dance to bring this forth into everyone's life. This… these snakes will be filled with… Uh, the turmeric, I mean, uh, with the termite uh, mound earth, the earth taken from the termi termite mound mixed with certain other substances 
and uh, these snakes will be filled once a month. This is an opportunity that people have to do this. This is a way of bringing a snake into the temple and uh, this aspect of snake and making use of the snake to enhance one's perception either in the form of kundalini or the outer snake. We will set up a whole new culture here in the next few years through the Bhairavi temple. So, as a small representative, we have this one here. See, now he doesn't want to go, but uh, for your sake I will send him now because now if I have to do this work, I have to put him down and… Are you okay? If you're okay, I'll leave him here. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Nobody should get up, scream, run, nothing <laughs>